So I'm wearing my old PAX shirt from back in the day. Someone offered me $20 for the shirt once, but I was like, nah, it's got too many like good memories attached to it for me. I would like to keep it. So I don't even play League of Legends anymore, and I still like the shirt. I like, I don't know, coming across to people in public as a gamer. I like feeling that way. I don't know. It makes me feel like I'm part of a community. Because sometimes when I wear this shirt, people are like, Oh, League of Legends! Uh. I'm like, yeah, I haven't played it in a long time. And they're like, oh, really? I'm in bronze, or I'm in silver, or, you know, whatever. And I'm just like, that's awesome. Keep pursuing your dreams, man. I don't know. Um, I like, have always had positive, nostalgic feelings about this shirt. I, uh... I wish the same could be said of everything I own, but that's okay. Um, yesterday we got some more guildies to, ahead of the curve mount. Um, we're still working on it, getting a big long list of guildies to mount, but I mean, when you have a guild of, what is it, almost 800 people, um, you know, like it takes a while, but Especially when you're only doing like two at a time, but you know, still, it's nice. The person we got the mount for yesterday in the raid group was so grateful, like so completely grateful and wasn't expecting it because there were actually two people ahead of her and neither of them were on like at all. So um, I just went straight to her and or actually three people technically out of her, but one of them couldn't be on. So I was like, hey, you're on. Congratulations. You get get it. And she's just like, oh, my God, I'll go watch the video on how to do the fight right now. I'll do whatever you want right now. She was so excited. Like, and, you know, she thought she was still waiting another like three, four weeks for it. So um, I don't know. She was just super grateful, super happy to be there. And, you know, that makes you feel good when somebody has like that kind of a reaction it makes you feel good it makes you feel like hey you made someone's day you might have even made their week or their month you don't know but you you have a po positive impact on people and sometimes it's so frustrating doing raiding and being the raid leader and stuff like sometimes so so frustrating and people whisper you constantly while you're trying to do call-outs and you're trying to, you know, keep everybody motivated and not talking over chat and blah, blah, blah. And people, you know, are pretty casual about it in our group. We're, we're not elitist at all. We're, hey, we can down this, so let's have fun and chit-chat while we do it. Um, which is fine to a certain degree, but... You know, it's a balancing act. And then, oh, there's always people whispering you. There was a dude who was like, I did good DPS, didn't I? And he thinks he's a better DPS than he is. But he was like, I did good DPS when I came with you guys, you know, the night before. And I was like, yeah, but all the core raiders are here and our carry's here. I'm not going to ask the carry to leave the group when they need the mount. And you don't need the mount. You already have the mount. And they're like, no, no, I want my Malefic Core. I'm not trying to get them out. I don't think you should kick them. I just thought my DPS guaranteed me a spot. And I was like, I never promised you a spot. Uh, we let you come because there was an open slot and you could come if you wanted to. It was like, I never promised nothing. And I was like, sorry if you misunderstood. And he's like, well, I just don't think it's fair. I'm here. I was like, you're here now. You were late. And the raid was full before you showed up late like i don't think i'm being unfair and he's like well that's just when i get off work and i was like i know you can't control that but neither can i <laughs> i don't think it's unfair and i don't think dps seen well should automatically guarantee you a spot in a raid that is actively announced as a core group of raiders that have been together almost every single person in the core group since like 
the end of Battle of Dizarra Lore, we, like since the beginning of Azara, it's been almost all the same people. And we're carrying people to the mount. I realize that you want to be part of like some sort of progression group or someone who farms. I understand. You want to get your Malefic Core. That makes sense. But at the same time, the group, unfortunately, is already set. We have a casual raid night, and you're welcome to go to that and try to help the casual raid push so they can get Malefic Cores from that group. Um, but the core group is for carrying people to the mount. That's what we all agreed to do for at least the next couple of months. Um, we might try doing progression in Mythic eventually, but for right now, we're carrying people to the mount. That's what we want to do. Um, like, we do legacy raids for Eternal Palace and Desire Lore. We're trying to do that specifically to get people their trinkets, to get people their essences, and then the Jane amount. Like, we're trying to help as many guildies have as many things that they would like as possible. And, unfortunately, that means we're not doing progression right now. Like, I don't know. I, I have to explain this to people constantly. And people show up late and want into the raid, like, all the time. Because if, if not everyone's there, we do. We, we'll, we'll often be like, you know what, you, sure, you can come along. But... If the raid's full, the raid's full. Um, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna kick the person who needs the mount and is there desperately excited to get their mount. Because that's what the group's for. I, I feel like people are like that in just, like, life in general. You do something nice for them, so then they, in, they feel entitled to your niceness forever. And they never think they need to give anything back or be understanding of the situation or view it in context. And they just think, yeah, automatically this is what you're supposed to be doing. And I mean, I see it in men a lot, especially. And I'm saying that as a guy. I was the other day in our trans group and there's a dude in there who's a little bit, um, talks a lot. Like, I would say a third of the talking in the trans group is literally just this guy um, responding to people, and he mansplains a lot, and he feels like he's imparting wisdom a lot and stuff. And some of the things he says are actually educational and interesting, because he is an older trans guy who has done a lot of stuff that, you know, a lot of the younger trans folk don't know about and stuff but a lot of it is just talking in circles or someone says something and he's like oh yeah I have this experience instead of letting them finish what they were talking about and I don't even think he realizes he's doing it and sometimes when I'm talking I'm like am I mansplaining right now am I talking over this person right now and I'll try to step back a little bit and be aware of it because so many men that I know do that so many men that I know automatically assume that hey this girl's being nice to you obviously she's into you and wants to like suck your dick and it's like no she's just being friendly and I see that a lot and I used to do that when I was you know a dyke or a butch les lesbian or however you want to say that I used to do that a lot I used to think that oh this feminine girl's you know giving me attention and being nice to me, so maybe she has a crush on me or something. And then, nah, that's not really what it was. She was just being nice. Now, there have been times that girls ha actually did have crushes on me, but I began to notice the difference between a girl who actually has a crush and a girl who's just being nice. The problem is, is if a guy's attracted to a girl and she's attracted, to, you know, to someone else, but he can't see it because he's attracted to her, and she's nice to him, he'll automatically start to lean toward, oh, well, maybe she's into me, because he wants her to be attracted. But a lot of times she's attracted to somebody else, and she's just either, you know, trying to be part of the area. Like, I, I've seen a lot of times a girl will be friends with a dude because he's friends with a dude that she likes. And then the dude that thinks oh, well, maybe we're more than just friends. No. 
I've seen that happen several times. I don't know. And I'm not saying women are conniving. I'm saying men that I have met, a ton of them in my life that do this, in general, in my experience, seem to do that. They just automatically assume that they're entitled to something because it happened before. Or they exaggerated how much something happened before. Or they are exaggerating how much they have to offer or whatever it is like there's this this I, I don't even know how to explain it and I don't know if that's just because of like male privilege and they're used to male privilege and so it creates that mindset or something I don't know I try to be mindful of it but I realize that sometimes I probably sound like a know-it-all and sorry I'm not trying to sound like a know-it-all I just genuinely love to learn and so I always am excited about what new things that I learned you know new things that I try or figure out or stuff like that I I like education and I don't think education is something that should stop when you graduate either high school or college or both like I, I just I feel like adults graduate and then they go get a job or they go start their life their family whatever it is and i don't i don't want there to stop being education like i i like education i like learning and sometimes i get overzealous about something neat that i learned or something i just was reading about the day before or something and then i go on and on about it and sound like a know-it-all but i'm actually just excited so I uh, I'm getting ready to help my girlfriend move in her apartment complex to a different floor and stuff and she's stressed out because her computer broke and she had to get a loaner and stuff so she's been moping a lot and she gets depressed sometimes about stuff she's done in the past that wasn't the greatest and she gets depressed sometimes about her parents being the unreasonably rigid people that they are but um it's frustrating because like i feel like i get up and i start doing chores and stuff and i try to get done with the stuff that needs to get done with so that I can spend time with the girls. But I can't really spend time with the girls because like she's always procrastinating. And I don't think it's always intentional. I think it's just avoidance. Avoidance of doing something because she doesn't feel great. And we have very different kinds of depression. I'm depressed all the time, but I also just do stuff and stay shut down and stuff. And she has the more, you know, typical where when you're feeling down, you just don't want to do anything. And I don't get like that very often. Um, I just have systematic depression, like, constantly. <sighs> But um, maybe someday in the future that'll change. But it's it's frustrating because I want us to be a team. I really, really do. But the girls just can't be consistent. I don't know why I can. I have bigger threshold or something, I don't know. I have no idea. We took a walk though, just us while my spouse was having a, a, an appointment and that was nice. We walked out in the sunshine and stuff. We did that a week before too and then, you know, we went on the picnic. So we've, we've been outside a couple of times now and man, I miss being outdoors. I love nature like i love the trees i love 
seen out in the air and by water. I, I, I don't think I could ever in my entire life live far away from water and trees. It's hard enough just living away from mountains right now. Um, but, like, I genuinely just really miss being outside more in nature. And we don't live in, like, the middle of nowhere. But, still, it was nice to just walk under some trees. I really, really want someday for us to have a home where... We have a little bit of land and we can actually walk outside and there, you know, is actually a garden and stuff like that. Like, I I mean, we've been talking recently about, you know, our dream home or whatever and stuff. And I, I find that personally very motivating. Like, like, that's what you're trying to get through all of this part to get to is that part. your haven as it were and I'm volunteering myself to do a whole bunch of work on it like stonework and and dig out actual like a pond and then have a little waterfall that trickles down into a thing not not a big waterfall but you know like a little tiny one and stuff that comes down from like a French drain that I'm gonna make like, all, like, I keep volunteering myself to build these things, and I, at the same time, I feel like it'll be good work. Like, the kind of work where you look at it afterwards and you feel really pleased and proud because you can see what you did. And I don't know. I, I like that feeling. I like doing things like that. Sometimes I wasn't really allowed to do stuff like that when I was growing up because that's for the boys. Um, I was the girl, and so I had to do a different kind of task than they got to do. And I wish I could have done more of that and done less of the girl stuff. Like, I think they thought I had the easy job, but I, I would much rather have been doing what they were doing. I was actually very jealous a lot of the time. I always felt left out. But I did not explain that. Like, so. I just wanted to be one of the boys and I couldn't be. So I didn't, I didn't know what to do with it except to just shut down and not be anything at all. And I just would lay in my room for hours and hours and stare at the wall. Or I would just draw and draw, or write and write, or read and read, or play a video game. And I just would do anything I could to just pretend I wasn't there. And that I was someone else. And I always either pretended that I was a guy, or else a very masculine woman. That's all I ever pretended to be. Like in the Wheel of Time series when I was younger, I used to always pretend I was Randall Thor. And then as I got older, I would pretend that I was like this kick-ass, like, Aiel who went and, like, made all the lesbians swoon. And I was like a maiden of the spear or whatever, but I was, like, very butch and lesbian and shit. And then sometimes I'd be, like, a nice to die myself and I'd be all, like, butch and masculine and stuff but I wouldn't join the red eye jet instead I just have all the girls fawning after me like I, I I don't know and then sometimes I'd be a warder and I would come to the tower to train and all the girls would fawn after me that way <laughs> or you know whatever I I sometimes would be like the son of a nobleman in Karen and in, in or in Andor you know like a nobleman's son and I'd be like all the girls would swoon after me and then I'd go up to the tower to train. I don't know. I always had the girls swooning after me and I always was some sort of like dashing heroic figure who like saved people and yeah. I always wanted to be a knight in shining armor. 
I say that a lot, but it's so freaking true. It's so freaking true. I don't know, I was thinking about some of the women that I've met who had crushes on me and I didn't pursue it because either I was in a relationship with someone else at the time or I didn't, especially early on when girls would genuinely have a crush on me, I'd be like shocked. And so I didn't respond to it really because I was like, is this real? Is this happening? You know, so I, you know, I was thinking about those girls and stuff and how my life would have been different if I had ever, I don't know, let something happen there. But I don't think any of those relationships would have been happy because it still would have been the age-old issue of they're a lesbian and I'm not. So, and I was an excellent lesbian until it came time to discuss anything I wanted. Um, but I, I've always have been very good to whatever girl I was with. Um, I've never had any complaints about any of that. They always broke up with me because they just didn't think it would work out. Sometimes they couldn't even explain why they didn't think it would work out. The girl would just be like, you know, I feel like this isn't going to go where you're wanting it to go. And I don't want to be the center of your universe. It's too much pressure. And I, I can't be what it is you're looking for. And, and, you know, they wouldn't know how to explain it like that. You know, there would just be something off. And, um, it was just that I was a boy and none of us realized it. Um, for all of us, but I, I don't know if any other people out there in the world ever think that, you know, think, oh, here's the people who I've ever had a crush on or had a crush on me and stuff. And honestly, it probably wouldn't have worked out. And it's probably better that it ended up the way that it did. Like, I don't know if I'm the only person who's that way or thinking that way or whatever. Anyway, I have a lot of other chores to be doing. I just... I wanted to come sit down and record, and I have a lot to upload. I haven't uploaded yesterday because I was avoiding it, because stuff about my birth mother and really long stuff, like long, long videos, but whatever. I did download a video editing studio. I have not set it up at all, but I did download one. So possibly in the future there may be editing to these videos. Maybe not. I don't know. It's kind of... It's... I always watch these back and I always, you know, talk to myself this way. Um, I don't want to miss out on some of the depth of my own, like, feelings and what I was talking about, but what I was really trying to say and, you know, thinking about how I was at the time and what was going on in my life and even just seeing where I was and where I am now. Like, I'm starting to catch up. My my videos are starting to, to get much closer to where I've actually recorded to as far as uploading. So, that's something. But at the same time, I don't know, I've, I've found it helpful. I found it enlightening to be able to watch these back. So, I don't know if I actually want to edit them just because it's like the raw feelings and and if it's for me 
I don't really need to edit myself, so. Anyway. But I did download it, so who knows, maybe I'll make a gaming video or something. But I gotta figure out all of the setup for it. <laughs> so, but it made me feel good to set it up, to, uh, not set it up, download it. It made me feel good to have a video editor again. Because I had one on my old computer when I made gaming guides and stuff, so. I don't know, I've been thinking about doing that again just because. I had fun with it. I mean, I was never, like, professional style, you know, or whatever, but I liked it. Um, I like helping people, and I like making videos even if I'm not, like, amazing, so, whatever. I don't know, I'm trying to think of things to be doing. I, I keep feeling trapped. I keep feeling like I want to take steps. I want to do the work to move forward with my life. And between the pandemic and voting around the corner and stuff going on with the girls, my fear of doctors, like the guild. I feel like I think it was my girlfriend I told that I feel like a horse and I'm in the starting line to, to start the race and I'm in the little structure with the gate and I'm prancing right there and I'm, I'm raring to go but the gate is shut and I can't, I can't run forward and I just, I want to run forward. I don't just want to run forward with my being trans, although I really, really do, at this point, I'm, I'm so excited to just do things like get new underwear, like, it, it, it's nothing anyone else can see, and yet it's like, just thinking about, what would I like, you know, what do I want, just feels really freaking good. It's strange to feel good because I feel bad so much of the time. But thinking about the future makes me feel good. And I have not been able to say that my entire life, so... That's, um, important. I will say that one bad thing that's going on is um, I have to deal with some negative stuff involving my spouse's health um, expressions of uh, her feelings and moods and stuff, so that's not great, but I don't know. Right now I'd rather just go do more chores and think about the future. And maybe Thinking about the future is some weird version of doing what I've done my entire life, which was wish I was somewhere else, and someone else, and some fantasy world. And maybe the future feels so much like fantasy that I don't need a fantasy world anymore to, to wish I was somewhere else. Because the somewhere else I wish can be on this planet, it's just feels unrealistic or whatever, but, um, still, it's technically not impossible, and it's at least nice to think about. 
Anyhow. Have fun. <laughs>